What's up beautiful people? This is Mike from iGadgets World and I hope you all are having a great weekend. In today's video, we are reviewing the Hisense UHG 2021 ULED TV, which is the successor to last year's H9G. This TV is in 55 inch and I bought this TV from Best Buy for $949 plus tax. So we're going to be talking about the design and also what this TV has to offer and some testing with the SDR, HDR, dark room, bright room, all sort of uh, testing we're going to be doing in this video. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel because that's going to help me a lot to keep buying these TVs and review for you guys. All right, guys, so the very first thing I want to talk about is the design of this TV. So being $949 MSRP for the 55 inch TV, this TV does not disappoint at all when it comes to the looks of the TV. It has the premium metal bezels. It comes with the metal legs. And when was the last time I saw a TV come in at this price tag with all of the bells and whistles and it's coming at just under $1,000 price tag? Well, this TV is right here, $949 plus tax. It's not just the front of the TV, which looks beautiful. Also at the back of the TV where we have this some artistic stuff going on and it's similar to last year's H9G. Good thing is that they did not just take it away because we don't see that quite often. So some companies might think why we spend time on the back of the TV. But the good thing is Hisense kept this elegant and beautiful design at the back and it's not just the design looks beautiful it is practical also because there's wire and cable management system out there all right so at the side of the tv on the back we have the two hdmi 2.0 ports which are capable of doing 4k 60 hertz and then we have the two hdmi 2.1 ports which are capable of doing 4k 120 hertz and then this tv has the label on it which says IMAX DTS because this TV is IMAX enhanced. So alongside the Dolby Atmos, it can also do the Dolby DTS, which is the sound and also IMAX enhanced, which is a picture mode similar to what we have the Dolby Vision, but it's from the DTS. So we have everything that is premium at the price tag of $949 and we just covered the design. Now we're gonna be looking into what do we get with this TV when it comes to the features. So we're gonna start looking into that and see what we have there. All right, guys, so when we talk about the features on this TV, this TV is feature rich. It has two HDMI 2.1 ports capable of doing 4K 120 Hertz, accompanied with the VRR, auto low latency mode, and the free sync. So this will satisfy your gaming needs for all of that next gen consoles like Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. So these are the gaming features. Now let's talk about the video and audio enhancements. So this TV is capable of doing the Dolby Vision. It has the Dolby Vision IQ, which adopts with your environment and adjusts the brightness according to your surrounding. I usually don't use that feature, but we're gonna be digging into all of that in the later in this video. All right, so that's the movie settings we have, the Dolby Vision and the Dolby Atmos for sound. It also comes with the IMAX Enhanced where you can use that feature to enhance the content according to the IMAX standards, which applies to the video and audio because this TV is one of those TVs which I've been finding because not a lot of TVs now do the DTS HD and the DTS X decoding and this TV is capable of doing that. So that's the plus thing on this TV that it can do that. So if you are playing a Blu-ray disc which has the DTS track, this TV will be able to play that. All right guys, so now we're gonna talk about the remote control on this TV, which is quite simple. It is kind of similar to what I have for my Amazon Fire TV, but it's a little bigger in size and it has all those major streaming services add-on buttons that you need for Netflix, Prime Video, Disney Plus, YouTube, Peacock TV, which is from the Xfinity service, and then we have the Tubi service. So the remote control is pretty basic, pretty slim for what I have. It's like almost kind of half cylindrical shape and uh, no complaints about the TV, but, but actually there's one thing that I love the most about and I wish all the manufacturers would include that. When you're watching your TV in the dark and you wanna use your remote control, the pain in the butt thing is that to find where those buttons at. And here you go, you have this backlight enabled remote control and I hope all of these guys, the big brand guys also do the same thing as Sony started doing it. I hope the other manufacturers would follow as well. And one thing that we have on the TV, we have the mute button on the microphone. So it's a toggle button. You can just switch it off if you don't like it because there are a couple of devices at home. You want to say, hey, G, I won't say the word because you're all of the devices will activate. So, but you can turn off this button if you don't want to use the Google Assistant, which is enabled into this TV. All right, guys. So that was about the remote control and this microphone mute button. 
All right, guys. So when we talk about watching the TV in the bright room, mostly people ask like, how does it perform in a bright room? Because there's there's like sun light come in and then you have the ambient light so the tv has to be bright enough to combat with that kind of situation so in this one right here this tv can produce up to 1500 nits calibrated and also it can go up to 2000 nits if you want to go crazy with the standard or vivid mode and increase the backlight to the maximum brightness crank up a little bit more so in some cases the tv has gone over 2000 nits but when we talk about the good color accuracy and everything i'm in the imax mode where i was hitting 1520 nits and it is advertised as conservatively at 1500 nits which is quite a spectacular for a tv which is barely touching the one thousand dollar price mark so now this tv is actually uh, 55 inch which comes with the 180 dimming zones the local dimming zones the 65 inch tv which is priced at 1300 dollars that comes with the double dimming zones of 360 dimming zones so if you have a little more budget i'll say go with the 65 inch because if this tv 55 inch can perform so good with the local dimming with the 180 dimming zones imagine how would it be for a 360 dimming zone i know a lot of reviewers out there have tested this tv with the 65 inch and that tv has actually the double dimming zones so next what we're going to do is we're going to test it in the dark room and i'm going to show you how it performs and whether there is any significant blooming or we have you know the uh, elevated blacks or these kind of situations when it comes to the totally dark room so let's just get into that all right guys, so when it comes to the blooming on the TV, when the lights are off and you're just looking at the TV screen and you have that brightness cranked up, you will see that there is barely any blooming. So it was really insignificant, even if it was there on those subtitles, you know, when I had turned on, it was almost like not distracting and it was not annoying at all. So that means like there wasn't any significant blooming. Being the LED TV, there is uh, inheritance blooming, which is quite negligible if you're sitting at the distance and watching the TV, not going up close and trying to look for the problem. So this TV actually performs so good. It has those inky blacks. The local dimming seems to be working, even though it has the 180 dimming zones and seems like the local dimming algorithms are kicking in whenever they are needed. And um, I have I even cranked up my ISO a little bit to show you guys, but there is barely any, even though what you see on the screen is due to the increased ISO. Otherwise, this TV performs so damn good in the dark room that um, for $949 as compared to $1,900 Q&90A, kind of have to go with the UHG. I mean, there's no, there's no brainer, no brainer that you would go with the QN90A when it comes to, you know, this close performance. And uh, one TV being priced at $1,900 with features that that TV offers, it's just that you're paying for the Samsung brand. And here you have this brand, people think like, oh, this is inferior brand, but it's actually giving you more. So I don't know, what's the deal? I would literally go and choose this TV if I had to choose between Q and 90A and this UHG. All right, guys, so now I want to talk about the gaming on this TV. As you know that mostly people are concerned with like whether it supports all the latest features that next-gen console has to offer. So let me tell you that this TV actually offers more and above and beyond. Like this TV offers you the Dolby Vision gaming, which you get from only the high-end TVs. So this TV can do the Dolby Vision, but it does not have a specifically a Dolby Vision game mode, but it can still do that. So what I did, I used the custom mode, and then you can go and turn off all the extra extra processing and you will be able to have lower input lag. If you have the motion enabled, you have the uh, noise reduction, all of that happening in the while you are gaming on the Xbox Series X, you're going to have the higher input lag. So I'm going to show you the settings on my Xbox Series X and want to show you that what it is capable of. So I'm going to go to the settings and then I'm going to head into the TV and display options where you can see what actually is being cooked in there so you can see that it actually supports everything that a higher tv higher end tv supports apart from the 4k 120 hertz dolby vision gaming which actually my other tvs like my oled tvs also do, do not support as of now so it depends on the manufacturer when they're going to bring the dolby vision 4k 120 hertz update so as of right now we do not have the support for the dolby vision but apart from that it matches actually neck to neck all the features of those um high-end TV models from the higher-end TV companies. 
So I'm kind of like blown away by the fact that this TV actually is a good value. Actually, it's the best value for $949. So if I have to choose a TV in the LED segment, I would literally be going for this one. The way it offers, you know, the 4K 120 Hertz gaming, and you can see that I just launched my Gears 5, which is capable of doing 4K 120 Hertz, and you will see the pop-up menu showing, and it will say the 4K 120 Hertz, right, 120 Hertz right there. So this is a TV which is a complete value. It does good uh, gaming. It has good um, movie watching experience, and it got the streaming applications, which offer you Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, DTS. It has IMAX enhanced. So in terms of like features, and you put that you know price, dollar, performance, and all that, those metrics and all. I don't know how to say all of that, but you know what I'm trying to say is this TV is amazing value when it comes to the. LED TVs and at the price tag of $949 it is literally unbeatable at all. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is the upscaling on this TV which is incredible. I put my 1080p disc on my Xbox Series X and you can see it matched that 24 FPS frame rate and reduced the refresh rate down to the 24 Hertz and the upscaling on this TV was phenomenal. Like I would see those textures details clearly and kind of give me the idea that oh am I watching the 1080p content or is it kind of like 4k so the 4k upscaling on this TV is literally good so now after this I want to take you guys to the different picture modes that are available on this TV and I have never seen these many HDR modes available on any TV I have ever reviewed so I'm gonna show you guys what do we have there in terms of like different picture menus for the SDR for the HDR and Dolby Vision all right, guys, so when we're talking about the SDR picture modes, we got the Vivid Standard Energy Saving, and it keeps going till the Filmmaker mode. I usually like the last three, the Theater Day, Theater Night, and the Filmmaker mode. And also for the Gaming mode, I would switch to the Game mode, and uh, I'll do the SDR gaming here. Vivid is Standard and Energy Saving and Sports. These are the four modes that I don't usually use personally, but it depends on your taste. If you like these modes, you're more than welcome to go and use them. I usually customize my Theater Day, Theater Night, and Filmmaker mode. And, and on this TV, the modes are almost really accurate as uh, you know we're talking about the RGB balance, the D65 color temperature. So if you want to use it, you can use the Vivid standard. There is no crime. Some people like that. I mean, and you can do that. It's your own TV, right? So there's no harm doing that. Use any of the modes that are available to you. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight modes available for a reason, right? All right, so now we're going to talk about the next category that we have for the Dolby Vision. So Dolby Vision is pretty simple. We have the Dolby Vision IQ which is the AI mode, it kind of adapts to your environment and adjusts the pictures, uh, picture, picture brightness accordingly. And then we have the Dolby Vision Dark, which is the Dolby Vision Dark, right? It's just straight up dark. And then we have the Dolby Vision Custom, which you can tweak and you can make changes to it. So we have three different modes right there. Now we're gonna go into the HDR, where we have a whole bunch of modes available in the HDR. I have never seen these many modes in the HDR on any TV ever before. And you can see we have the wide variety of the HDR picture modes, similar to what we have in the SDR. Now we have all those picture modes in the HDR as well. And similar to the SDR, I also prefer here to use the HDR theater, filmmaker mode, and the IMAX enhanced mode or the IMAX mode. It gives that picture, that boost that you need for the optimization for the IMAX is actually the, my most favorite one. HDR theater is good too. So I kind of switch between the HDR theater and the IMAX mode. Filmmaker mode is kind of dull for this kind of bright panel. You actually want it to be unleashed and you want to use the HDR theater and the IMAX mode. I don't want to go crazy with the vivid and standard, but if you like those picture modes, I mean, go ahead and do that. I mean, there's no crime. If it was the crime, you wouldn't have those picture modes available at your disposal. So if they are there, they're for a reason. Some people, I have some friends, they like the, um, you know, the bluish colors and the vivid colors. So everybody looks at the color differently. So there's no crime doing that. In the motion, I like the film motion because it doesn't bring that soap opera effect. And also being in the film 
uh, motion enhancement actually brings that cinematic motion that we have in the LG OLED TVs and, you know, that kind of motion I like because it doesn't give you that uh, soap opera effect. So that's all I have from this video, guys. Make sure to hit the like on this video, subscribe to the channel. Also, go to the comment section and let me know what do you want to see, what comparisons you want to see. I know I had a long break. I had some family stuff going on, the kids, the summer break started so there are a couple of things happening so i'm just gonna try to keep up with all these videos and be active more often as i can and i'll see what is the next on the plate so until then have a great weekend see you in the other video